The mail is here. It's Monday. Let's do a mailbag Monday. Let's start with the intriguingly described office supply. Hmm. Yeah, I guess if you're in an electronics shop office thing, alligator clips. That one. Oh wow, those have got a fairly stiff spring on them. This one especially because it's got two springs including one jump jammed up its took us here. Did that fall off any of the others? Nope. Somebody else must be missing a spring. Or I got a spare. That's cool. So these I ordered to go with these for the previously mentioned let's make a helping hands thingy so the plan is to mount these in there i ordered two or three different sizes um, and they haven't all arrived yet so uh, these ones let's just zoom in here are a little bit big uh, for the existing hole and actually if I drill that out I'll have to probably cut that back to about there then I'll just insert those in there and epoxy or something them in and then figure out how to mount this uh, what's his name Paul over at Learn Electronics uh, threaded them into a chunk of metal as a base that he uses and um, built himself a full soldering station that's one idea I might just mount them to a block of wood or find something else nearby. Adam Savage, I noticed, attached or built some really long ones because you can just snap these apart and put them back together. He built some ridiculously long ones um, and then added some wire up the center to stiffen them. So that's a possibility too. So I'll have to see when I uh, get the rest of my clips in that I ordered. And I'm only going to need about half a dozen for that project. So the rest of these, um, actually, occurs to me, I think those female jacks are, they are, they're banana plug size. So I could use some with some banana plug cables, potentially. Um, or I could just solder them on and heat shrink them onto something uh, to create some more test clip leads. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> Wonder how much I paid for them. Ten pieces, single prong alligator clips with teeth, alligator stainless steel clips new. From I underscore fact, I paid dollar nineteen with free shipping for the ten of them. So what's that? Uh, Twelve cents each. That's a bargain for me. And yeah, it shows them down there in the picture, connected to a banana plug. That'll be interesting to work with. Next we have Iron Tip. Hmm. A tip from an Iron Chef? Probably not. It is a package of soldering iron tips, which makes perfect sense. I ordered them way back when I got this iron, because it didn't come with any spares, and I'm hoping that it's the right ones, because of course this Beku Baku, whatever, is completely an off-brand that I've never heard of and nobody else in the world has heard of, probably. But these ones, I think I... Oh, come on. I think I ordered them um, based on... Oh, they're based on this thing being probably a rip-off of a Heiko. And these likely being the right size. So we got five tips. There's my one that came with the iron. And that one is pretty similar. Got this nice big chunky one. Got this one which is more or less a chisel. Okay. Um, and what are these? 
So here's the one that was that I had sitting beside my the one that came with the iron. Actually, that's a little bit bigger. The one that came with the iron looks like it's one of these two, and I got two of that kind. Okay. So that's good. If I damage this one or if I want to do something a little bit heavier duty, I can. As I suspected, I ordered these as Heiko replacements and they seem to fit my off-brand iron nicely. $2.40 for five pieces of 900M-T metal solder screwdriver iron tips for Heiko soldering rework tool from DD-614. I doubt that there's much to say about them down here. Um, for those Heiko models, size... Okay, it claims that there are five different tips. I'm not sure. Two of them look very, very similar. Next up, we have two times part number button. Nope. Hmm. There's an odd opening to that envelope. Oh, oh, these look like arcade buttons. Let's see here. Yeah, so we have a little plastic button cap that pushes down and mounts through a hole. And we have a mechanism that goes behind it to hold an LED. Okay, does that LED have a resistor in with it or not? I guess not, but anyway, that clips in there. That goes into the back of the button in some fashion. There we go. That looks reasonable. And then we have a micro switch or off brand variant on the theme of micro switch. And that, so it clips into here. Uh, not like that. It clips into here like that. Okay. So let's get him in there somehow. A certain amount of pressure and abuse. I wonder if there is a better way of doing this. Is there ever a better way than brute force and ignorance? I think not. There we go. That's in. And then... That drops in here some way. Oh, okay. There's a little lock there and there's a little tab there. That goes in like that and rotate to click. And you look at that. And that's a fairly standard footprint of a micro switch. Um, so I could use a branded one if I chose to. Okay, so drill the hole in your chassis. Screw that on there. And that just clicks in. Ah, I've set my power supply for 5 volts and 20 milliamps, so it shouldn't blow anything up. Turn it on, and let's see which way around. This LED is not that way. There we go. Oh, it's pretty much standard bluey white one. Okay. Oh, and that Lights up the push button very well. Ah, cool. The only other question I have is can you put a legend underneath the keycap of that button? Let's just pop him out there. Oh, it looks like, yeah, you can. You can put a paper disc saying whatever you want in there and then slide that back on and oh it's even got little alignment pins you see that alignment pins for that that's slick so that it won't rotate and that goes in there that goes down into there And 
all back together. That's very modular. I like that. And you could even put uh, colored lighting gel in there to uh, give it some color if you wanted it to not be white. I like those. One piece, except for I bought two, a round lit illuminated arcade video game button switch out. LED light lamp popular. Popular is a useful keyword. Uh, from Zia, that guy over there. Zhao Yang 5682. Um, buck 27 each Canadian with no shipping charge. See much about it down here. Oh, the LED is apparently rated for 12 volts. How about one of these big ones now? This one says one times soldering tool. Just in case it is actually what it says it is, I don't want to cut through it. Oh. Oh, okay. There's an iron and an assortment of tips oh right yeah now I remember okay uh, so as I said when I ordered this thing it didn't come with any spare parts at all no extra tips or anything so I made a few purchases hastily and on the same day that that I unpackaged it so this iron came with two four six eight ten a dozen tips in an assortment of sizes. Um, where is that other package I just picked out? So it looks like it's got a little bit of overlap with these guys. Uh, it's got that weird chisel that I doubt I'm ever going to use. It's got that fairly hefty tip. But then it's got some a range of medium, more medium sized tips. Which will be much better for working on through-hole type circuit boards, I think. Set that one aside and I'll... Oh, and, 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 and... Oh, it... The iron handle also came with a tip, which is... Looks like the same tip that that guy's got. Um, and that has a four pin, five pin socket. Okay, does that match? I'm hoping it does. Does that match this? Again, I'm assuming that this thing is a very close ripoff for a Heiko. Um, that looks promising. Let me just unfurl this thing. Um, set that iron aside. Put that guy into there. Yeah, that fits. More importantly, does this fit? Uh, where's the gap? Okay. So that does. It's it's more of a soft, rubbery stuff. This is a hard, yeah, not quite bakelite, but that kind of hard stuff. And does this thread on? No, it doesn't. Okay. <sighs> or does it? And I'm just not. Hang on here. That slid way back. There, it had some little nubbins that it was hiding behind. Okay, let's try this again. Plug him in. That does thread on there. That's promising. Okay, let's turn her on and see what happens. Um, okay, it's blinking. That tells me that it's trying to heat. Sizzle's good. So I've got this set for about 375-ish. It should be more than enough to melt this guy down. It's taking a bit of time to heat up. Probably should have verified that that nut's seated tightly. Yeah, there's about a 
quarter turn or so there. That may or may not affect it. Oh, there we have melting. There we go. That's a good sign. Okay. So if it can do that, obviously it can do all the other soldering iron-like things. Let's just check it with my ancient Radio Shack solder, which is going to take a little bit more heat to get through. As you can see, as I'm cooling it down with the workpiece, it's trying harder over there. Okay, so it works. It does the job. Let's let him cool down there while we go and check the listing. From Banggood, 5 core welding iron handle with 10 piece solder iron tips for 852D, uh, 936, and 909, which are all uh, HACO model numbers or HACO cone model numbers. Um, but for my Baku or Baku 901, it seems to function as well. I paid, wow. More than I thought I would pay, whatever. Um, I guess to get something like this, that's a reasonable price. $11.90 Canadian free shipping. It says it runs on 24 volts. It is 50 watts. The plug is 5 cores. It fits various different uh, HACO model numbers. And it has 10 tips, but I think I actually counted 12, didn't I? Plus the one on the iron. That's a bonus. All right, next up we have one times repair BGA, one times heating core. Hmm. BGA? I don't mess with that kind of thing. That's far too small for my old iron. That makes oh and what do we have here we have a heating element a Hokan heating element okay oh that looks oh okay that is a replacement heating element for all those common ha heiko soldering irons. Okay, so that looks suspiciously like that, and I'm hoping it is because that's why I bought it. Um, we have here one, two, three, four wires. There's five wires in this, as we recall from earlier. So presumably one of them is ground. Okay. So now I am well and truly spared for this iron. The only thing I don't have a spare part for is the power supply part of the iron. But that's just fairly common bits and pieces I think one piece 24 volt DC 50 watt 4 pin ceramic core heating element for soldering iron from Banggood I paid the princely sum of a buck 13 with free shipping of course oh that's more than I paid for that other one darn things must have gone on sale oh well Whatever. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Color white voltage 24 volts, power 50 watts, size 70 millimeters. Suitable for compatible, yeah, suitable for constant temperature soldering iron. Compatible all these HACO models in the 900 series. And it looks very much like it's compatible with mine. But for buck 13, yeah, it's a gamble, but it's a gamble that I can afford to take and the other thing in that package it called it BGA something or other what it actually is is a little stainless steel um, solder 
paste mask thing. Um, this one claims to be specifically for the iPhone 7, but it looks like it's basically just a bunch of common component layouts. Um, it's not exactly what I had hoped for, but this is for an experiment. Um, when my solder paste finally shows up, I want to see if I can use this and just mask out the holes that I don't need and with some caps on tape or something and then just squeegee some uh, paste across the component layout on on the surface mount board I'm not sure if this is going to work it's just an experiment um, from watching other people's videos and watching how it's really done usually when you order a custom board you can order a laser cut solder mask or solder stencil like this but for the specific circuit board since I'm going to be working on just random kits um, I wanted to try using something like this IC repair BGA for iPhone 7 rework relabeling st reballing stencil template components two dollars and thirty cents from Banggood that's more expensive than what I would like to do for just a basic experiment, but I'm guessing after however much searching that I did back in... When did I order this? Looks like it was February. Um, this is probably the best deal I could get on something with a variety of, uh, of component layouts on it. I know I showed you five at the beginning, but that wasn't very long, so I'm going to throw one more in here it is mysteriously called module I like a good mystery what do we have it looks very much like a kit well, it's obviously a kit it's a circuit board with components what else would it be question is what kit is it? So what do we have? We have a 555 timer. That's always promising. Uh, RP2. Resistor potentiometer. Okay. Well, the draw diagram looks kind of like it. J1. A. Um, oh. Is that a relay? Sure, that's what that is. That's a really DC in. Uh, that usually is a photoresistor, a photosensor of some sort. Capacitor, another variable resistor over here. Uh, okay, so I'm going to say a light operated relay output that doesn't, that either pulses or gives a one shot or has a delay or something like that all right this listing is from long enough ago that it's expired so i can't click on the exact one but as you can see this is diy kit photoelectric multifunction automatic switch kit electronic making kit could they say kit any more times i paid a buck 61 for it back on january 22nd and it took a while to get here but there are others who are well are selling it, including the same seller, Robot Home. Um, it seems to be a lot more expensive right now. But I clicked on one of them just to figure out the circuit, and I couldn't find a schematic in it. But basically, it is as I thought: a photo sensor which turns the relay on and off claims that U1 is a Schmidt trigger. U1 is the 555. Okay. So they're using it as a Schmidt trigger somehow. That's interesting. We're going to have to dig into this more. Um, but you can adjust the sensitivity with one of the, the variable resistors. Resistor potentiometer 1, they call it and do they tell us what the other one does 
the con this is conductive to the stability of the circuit. Adjusting RP2 can change the reference voltage, thus changing the brightness range and the starting point. Okay, so RP1, RP2 need to be adjusted repeatedly to achieve the required degree. Okay, this is going to... Ah, what is that? Okay, I'm going to have to find a maybe a schematic or something, or possibly draw a schematic, but when it comes time to make this, we'll figure it out in more detail. In the meantime, it goes into the drawer with the other kits. There we go, another interesting mailbag. It seems the uh, theme uh, when I was ordering this stuff uh, was bits and pieces for soldering in the soldering station, mostly, with a few other variants. Like that and the fun little cookie buttons. Oh, and of course, a kit. Because you can never go wrong with a kit. Thank you once again for watching. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them down below in the comments section. Oh, and I'm thinking in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to do a kit build video. And I've got an assortment of kits, this one included. I think I'm actually going to ask my uh, my Patreons to uh, to suggest which kit I should do. So if you want to join in that conversation, uh, jump over onto Patreon. The links in the comments, and uh, I'll uh, I'll throw something up there uh, next few days to to help decide what I'm going to build on that uh, on that build video. Thanks again. I will talk to you later.